Hi, this is Brian Tarrant with Significance Magazine, and I'm at RSS Conference in Belfast, and I'm talking now with James Tucker of the ONS. Hi, James. Hi, Brian. How are you doing? I'm good, thank you. Uh, you've just come from a, a talk about privacy methods, so yeah. we're going to have a little chat about that, and you can explain to listeners what it is you were talking about. But first, do you want to give uh, listeners a bit of a background to who you are and what you do at ONS? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So I've been at the ONS now for about eight years, and I've worked in other government departments um, before, and I've also been a bit of a long-standing friend of the RSS too. So I did a stint on the um, RSS Council, and now I'm involved in uh, the editorial board for Significance magazine. My role at the ONS is on uh, um, improving the quality of our statistics. So I work across the whole of the government stats service, not just ONS, to improve the quality of everybody's outputs. Okay, so where does your uh, interest in privacy methods come from? Um, in, in my area, we, um, we have this program of reviews called National Statisticians Quality Reviews. So in the past, they've been quite sort of narrowly focused, a bit of a sort of deep dive into very specific statistics. But we realised that there wasn't a way of looking at the really big issues affecting the statistical system at large. So we've completely revamped these reviews and um, our first one was on um, privacy and uh, confidentiality, which was actually quite a tough one to start off with, but definitely a worthwhile thing to look at. So when we're talking about privacy in uh, this, this context, in the ONS context, uh, is it um, everything from you know, making sure when people uh, take part in surveys that the data is protected all the way up to when data is released that it can't be uh, they c the, you know the the individuals can't be identified based on the information that's released yeah that's exactly right so our, our main focus really is on the um, the data that we put out there so um, what we found is that um, while there's a huge amount of um, new data sets available and this is really exciting for people working on data it opens up all sorts of new opportunities for to innovate with data and essentially people are like a kid in a candy store with it but on the flip side the um, it does also open up more ways for mal malicious people to kind of use that data for their own ends. So we have to keep pace with all the all of this and make sure that all the methods we use are fit for purpose. Still, because pri I guess privacy, or you know, uh, respondent protection, identity protection, that sort of stuff in the old days might have just been taking the names off of mm. Uh, mm. A, a, you know a, a record or you know making sure that. Um, particular identifiers weren't included, but now it's much more difficult than that, right? Because people can put together different data sets to try and figure out who people are based on things that you, you know, you might think one data set's anonymized sufficiently, but if they can pair up unique characteristics maybe mm. across data sets, then there's a possibility of being yeah. able to identify someone. Definitely with the proliferation of different data sources, people can, if they want to, use this to sort of um, look across these and potentially recon um, reconstruct um, and identify a, an individual from those. Um, another sort of emerging issue is the use of social media. So people put a lot of information on social media and um, although there are privacy settings on most of the platforms really you have to go from the premise that um, everything you put on social media is public because as soon as you share something regardless of your privacy setting somebody else could then share that and then it's out into the public domain and um, with these sort of supplementary pieces of information that adds a, yet another dimension to the complexity of this. So what sort of privacy methods are you looking at in particular? I, I, I guess there's a range so maybe you want to talk, talk listeners th through a, a couple of them maybe. Yeah sure so um, yeah, I mean, there's there's ones that uh, come from the, um, there's a lot more demand for sort of custom tables. So if, say, for example, with the um, 2011 census, um, the tables we published were all sort of um, laid out static tables, but there's a lot more demand now for um, sort of table builders and things that uh, people can produce their own, um, their own sort of sets of variables. But then that throws up the issue of, um, how do you protect tables that you don't know are being produced? So there's an um, there's techniques that you can do to add an extra sort of layer of protection on those. Um, an area that I'm particularly interested in, there's a lot of research going on in the ONS and elsewhere, is on um, synthetic data, which um, isn't actually a new concept. It's um, the idea of using an artificial data set that has the same statistical properties of the real thing. Um, when I say it's not new, it's really come back to the fore since we've had the power to um, p produce these sorts of data sets on much larger data sets than we could do previously. And in a sense, 
offers that ability to circumvent the um, whole privacy protection thing by producing an artificial data set that could take the place of the real thing. But these, um, these aren't just made up numbers, are they? Is it, is it a case of kind of uh, constructing data from you know, real people, but in such a way that you're swapping sort of data or characteristics, yeah, it, it, identifiers, and, or not identifiers, sorry, but aspects of a real data set to create something new. Yeah, the idea is to understand the sort of key statistical properties of that data set and um, produce it in a way that doesn't reveal the uh, the characteristics of individuals. I mean, it's, it is still uh, very much a sort of growth area, so there's a lot of research going on at the moment. Um, a while back we um, hosted an event at the ONS and we were really taken aback by the interest in it and we had people from 30 or so organisations from across the country coming to attend and so it's far from a, a niche area but I think there's still um, sort of s some important questions to be answered about it so on the one hand it does have this potential but then there's also a question of how accurately does it actually simulate the real thing and if you get closer in terms of accuracy, do you then actually end up introducing um, uh, privacy disclosure risk into the data, even though it's artificial? So I can uh, I can certainly understand that there is a lot of research to be done because I guess this isn't a kind of thing where you can say, oh, we think this works, so let's just try it and mm. see what mm. happens. So how do you how are you testing these things to make sure that they are doing what you want them to do before they become part of the way of releasing? Uh, yeah. Information. Yeah, that's that's an interesting question. It also it it sort of it that that sort of thinking impacts on all the um, privacy methods that we're looking at. So, you re yes, you ca you're right. You can't just introduce something and sort of hope it works. So we we do some sort of pilot studies. For example, we've. Uh, um, done a pilot study on creating a synthetic version of the labour force survey data, which is one of our so the ONS's major major data sets um, that we we collect. Um, also, an area that we're looking to expand is on um, intruder testing. So that's where you have to, you know, really get into the mindset of somebody who wants to crack these data data sources, and that's actually harder than it sounds because um, if you bring in sort of um, people who are kind of friendly sort of intruders trying to trying to sort of um, get something out of the, the, these data sets they might not have the level of determination and deviousness perhaps that um, you know the the real sort of criminal would have with them so that's kind of uh, I guess the um, it's analogous to uh, when companies do sort of penetration testing of mm. their systems right you want you want to simulate an attack mm. and mm. does it stand up to that attack yeah. but it's yeah. I guess, as you say, it's you, you can't throw it out there to the real bad guys because they they might well show up cleverer ways of going about it or mm. more devious ways of going about it. But then you're at risk of identifying people. Exactly. Yeah. There's a yeah. There's a f there's a sort of a fine line to walk there. But over over time, we have built up a sort of, you know, set of realistic intruder scenarios. So to really understand how how this would happen. But I think the important thing is that the area as a whole isn't one that stands still. So you can't s just introduce an approach to privacy protection and then leave it. Um, um, it it has to stand the test yeah it has to keep on evolving with the times and essentially you can end up in a bit of an arms race with the people trying to break break uh, break the protection on these things so you basically embarked on a, on a research project that will never end um <laughs> yeah i mean it's obviously protection of data um is the app, you know it's one of the kind of most important important things i mean there's uh, it all boils down to this uh, tension between the use of the use of a data set so um, on one extreme, if you didn't publish anything, then you could relax about the privacy side, but then there'd be no statistics to inform policy, no jobs for the, the likes of us. And um, uh, at the other extreme, you could throw all the data out there. So it's about finding that sweet spot where you have a sort of balanced approach which um, reflects the risk associated with the data. So, for example, some data is more sensitive than others, and you'd be a lot more stringent with that than perhaps others. Well, I don't envy you the task of having to do that, but good luck with it. Thank you for taking the time to talk to us today. That's great. Thanks, Brian. Thanks.